All right, shalom, shalom. First thing I want to say is all praises, all praises to the Most High God, all praise to the Most High God, Yahweh, right, and His Son Christ, through His Son Christ, all praises. Um. So John three sixteen. Uh, let's go to John three sixteen. Figure out what John three sixteen is talking about. John chapter. Three, verse 16 right John chapter 3 verse 16 says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life right so God so loved the world says that who it says uh first off let's deal with that believe right well i want to show y'all something look at look at what this verse 14 said it says and as moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so the son of man must be lifted up that whoever shall believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life now we know people that believed in christ during certain time periods didn't necessarily die and be saved consider literally right there you know things happen in certain dispensations of time but it's something i want to look at right um, i think that's mark chapter uh salaki hold on where do i got that at um, oh yeah, yeah 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 there we go numbers 21 i want to go to numbers 21 i want to show you something Numbers chapter 21, right? Look at what Numbers 21 say. So Numbers 21 and 9, it says, uh, And Moses made a fiery serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And, and it came to pass that if any serpent had been in any man, when he, he beheld the serpent of brass, when he looked upon it, he, 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 Salakia, he lived. So, so, the Bible is saying that when this was done and the charge was put forth that Moses would do this, the children of Israel by faith will look upon that pole and believe. Now let's go back to John chapter 3 and 16 real quick. So John, right? So like it. Look at what John 3 and 14 said. John 3, 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted, that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now, let me show you I was uh, funny about that, right? Let's go to Mark chapter 7, verse 9, I think, right? Let me see. Let me see. Where is that? 20? Let me see. So here we go, right here. Mark chapter 7, verse uh, 26. It says, the Greek woman was a, it says, the woman was a Greek, a Seraphonician by nation. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her. Jesus said unto her, let the children first, like it, first be filled it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it unto dogs. And she's answered, and she's like, and she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under, so like, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. Look at what he says here. And he said unto her, For this saying, go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. This is the literally the same. Uh, this is literally the same thing that we can see, and this is the same woman they say had more faith. This is Mark's account. It's the same woman we say had more faith than all of Israel. This is the same thing that we can see in dispensation happening. We see we see uh, the children of Israel having an infirmity, uh, a pole of brass being made, Christ being likened unto that pole, pole of brass. And by faith, the children of his Israel was saved, was saved, right? Was restored, literally delivered. So, so was this, uh, this, this heathen, 
It says, just like uh, the serpent was lifted up, so would Christ be lifted up, that whosoever believes. So that when they looked upon that pole, that was by faith. When this woman came up to Christ and believed, that was by faith. We see literally the same uh, dispensation right here in John chapter 3. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so Christ must, must be lifted up, that whosoever believe in him should not perish. So the woman believed in Christ, her daughter didn't perish, and she was restored. And we don't want to play a game with John chapter 3, verse 16. Let's go to John chapter 3, 16. John chapter 3, verse 16. Let's go to the word world, cosmos, uh, uh, decoration, arrangement of the stars, heavenly hosts, ornaments, heavens, the world, the universe, the circle of the earth inhabitants of the earth the human family right multitudes the ungodly mass of men i mean this is all clear now let's go to isaiah chapter 45 and 17 so don't nobody try to play those games and let's see if the, what the word world means there let's see if it actually means a mass of people or a duration of time considering we know that the hebrew word is olam which has nothing to do with people or government is set or of anything so Isaiah chapter 45, right? Verse 17. Let's handle that. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with the everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Now that word world is literally dealing with durations, not dealing with uh, a government, people, the literal world. It's not dealing with the literal earth. So let's just substantiate that. This word here is Olam. Strong's H 5769. Olam. Olam. Now the word Olam, let's look look at what it's dealing with. D the definition has nothing to do with John 316 world. It says long duration. Uh I mean this stuff is clear, man. This is clear. Look at these. Ancient time, long time, everlasting, evermore, perpetual, old, ancient, world, continuous. So John 3.16 is emphatically dealing with the inhabitants of the earth. Everybody that's called to believe in him. Uh, I mean, that, that's just quite clear. I mean, uh, look at what it says here. In that day, in that day, I will rise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof and will rise up his ruins and will build as in the days of old that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. That, that, that's clear. The other nation is going to be called. We see that being the fulfillment of Acts chapter 15. So let's get it. Acts chapter 15, verse 7. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, men and brethren, you men and brethren, you know how a good while ago God made choice among us that by my mouth, the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which know their hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith, proving now that the Gentiles can even get the Holy Ghost. But James is going to substantiate and prove that. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Salakia. Let me get back to that. Uh, yeah, we shall be saved even as day, right? It says, look, then all the multitude kept silence to give their audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them, right? So Barnabas and Paul uh, got up. Let's go to account with Barnabas and Paul. It's Acts chapter 13, verse 6. Acts chapter 13, 13 verse 6 says, uh, Right here, it says, and when they had gone through the seal unto Fafmos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew named Bar Jesus. 
which was with the deputy Sergius Polius, right? Now, Sergius Polius, uh, this guy Sergius Polius right here, um, is a Gentile, right? Sergius Polius is a Gentile. It's not an Israelite. Polius, uh, it's not a. This this man isn't a. Uh, this, he's isn't a uh, Israelite at all, you know. Um, this information and archaeology based upon Sergius Polis, he's not an Israelite. Um, I, I would suggest people to get into this information, dealing with Barnabas and uh, Polis' uh, family line and things of that nature. They got uh, information and things of that nature out there dealing with uh, Sergius Polis, man. Um, Sergis is uh it's 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 all right here man. All the information that people need to go to and get to uh is here. Um quick searches uh clearly show you guys and sub substantiate that uh uh he is an interrelation of any Israelite at all. So anyways. Uh it says which was with the deputy Sergis Polius, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elamaz the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. And Saul, whose name called as Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O of st stability and all mischief, thou child of the devil, which is a Jew, thou enemy of all unrighteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the, way, the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell upon him a mist, a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by hand. And when the de and, and the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Right. So what happened was a Jew got judged of their own nation and the heathen literally believed and got brought into the gospel. Yeah, I finished Acts chapter uh, 15. So Acts 15, right, says, Then all the multitude gave silence to give their audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them, which was that was a clear example. And after they held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon have declared how God at first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name, right? The Gentiles. What Gentiles was that? Let's see if there were Israelite scattered Gentiles or natural heathen Gentiles. Let's see what James and the apostles and the Pharisees that believe said. And to this agree the word of the prophets as it is written. After this, I will return and build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down and raise up, raise up his root in Salakia. And I will build again the ruins thereof and I will set it up. Sounds like what we read in Amos chapter nine, referring to natural Gentiles. So let's see what let's see why he quoted this. He quoted this because we're dealing with natural Gentiles. So look at what it says here: that that the residue of men may seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, that doeth all these things. Clear cut punch in the dry man. This is Amos chapter nine. So the reference and context is Gentiles. That's what we're talking about. That's what the whole context is, Gentiles. Right? Right? These Gentiles are turning to God because these are natural Gentiles. That's why Amos chapter 9 was quoted, and for no other reason. So Amos chapter 9, what did that say? What is this in reference to? Actual Gentiles. Can't get past that. Just read the same thing that was quoted. And that day I will rise up the tabernacle of David, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen which are called by my name, so that the Lord that do this. With that, all praises to the Most High.